Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it. And I have the power because I am connected to the power source, Jesus. I'm so glad to be able to come before you this morning, the next to the last day, uh, Sunday of the year. And God is just so good and his mercy endureth forever. Just remember this holiday season. Don't let it be a cliche that Jesus is the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. He is the reason for every day. Um, in our going in and ab about family work activities, let's make sure that Jesus is the reason for every day as we celebrate his birthday and we should celebrate it all year long. So again, we're so grateful uh, that everything that God has blessed us another day and that he is good and his mercy endureth forever. This is our Bible decree. This is my Bible, God's word, and in it is eternal life. Because God's word is my guide, I will not add nor take anything from it. And I, I truly thank God for that because we all go through challenges. This year has been one of the one of the most challenging years, but nevertheless, it doesn't change who God is. And we're still refocusing in 2021 to be more kingdom minded. And this is a prime time right here to be kingdom minded even more during this season. So we thank God for it. So let, let's go ahead on and get into what we're going to talk about today. And I thank God uh, for today and on next Sunday, Minister Sherry Harris will bring forth our message for Christmas. And we thank God for that. The title is to tell the truth, to tell the truth. And I subtitled it the serum test to tell the truth, the truth serum test. And let me tell you about this. To tell the truth was actually a game show that started mm, back in the 50s. And it's, it went off, I think, for a while, and it's back on, went off, and it's on now. Here's what it is all about. Three contestants claim to be a person with unusual distinction or occupation. One is telling the truth. The other two are imposters. Four celebrity panelists ask them questions to figure out who is telling the truth. Before I start, continue rather, let's pray. Father, I pray today that the word that comes forth will bless, will bring glory to your name, that souls will be saved, delivered, and set free. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So I told you about the story, and I remember seeing that show oh, 50 plus years ago. Look at it once in a while. And so they're trying to trick people. Again, three contestants claim to be a person with unusual distinction or occupation. One is telling the truth and the other two are imposters. Four celebrity panelists ask them questions to figure out who is telling the truth. In this day and time, we know we have imposters. Those who um, said they are of Christ, but the lifestyle is totally something different. So let's get into it. To tell the truth. Here's some uh, truth is the quality or state of being true. Two, that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality. Remember that according to fact and reality. Similar words, sincerity, truthfulness, candor, gospel, the gospel truth. And I say the subtitle is the truth serum test. Okay. And truth serum is a drug supposedly be able to induce a state in which a person answers the question truthfully. In other words, they used to use that uh, truth serum medicine legally to try to get people, especially criminals and people in general who may have been involved in the crime of seeing it, 
And they, I, for the most part, I don't think they use that anymore, but it will get you to tell the truth. Well, we don't need a truth serum test to tell the truth. We need the word of God and the Holy Spirit in us. Okay, we're going to go on. Point one, whose report do you believe? Two, the story of Jesus, Jesus isn't a fairy tale. Three, who came down to save us? Who came down to save us? Jesus Christ, Santa Claus, the two fairy, or the Easter bunny. Who came down to save us? For we need to tell the truth. Now, let me give you a little information since this is the Christmas holiday. And let me, let me read this about St. Nicholas. This is called the Wikipedia. St. Nicholas of Myra, traditionally the 15th uh, March, and it's also known as Saint uh, of Nicholas of Bari was an early Christian bishop, listen to this good, of Greek descent from the maritime city of Myra in Asia Minor during the time of the Roman Empire because many of the miracles attributed to his intercession, he is also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker. Saint Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, repentant thieves, children, brewers, pawnbrokers, unmarried people, and students in various cities and countries around Europe. We're talking about um, St. Nicholas Amaro. His reputation evolved among the pious, which are the poor, as was common from early Christian saints, and his legendary habit of secret gift giving gave rise to the traditional model of St. Claus or Santa Claus. Saint Nick through center class. You see, Saint Nicholas has become to many more popular than Jesus, more popular. And we as believers can't, like I said in message, we can't back down. We can't stand down. We can't go back. We must believe and preach the word of God. So we talked about uh, Saint uh, Santa Claus, and let's talk about the Tooth Fairy. We're talking about to tell the truth. They have four contestants. Then the audiences, the audience is trying to find out who's telling the truth. We are the audience. We are the audience, and here's four people. Four people. Jesus Christ, Santa Claus, the two furry, or the Easter Bunny. There are many others I could have written down uh, about that. Okay. The two furry myth began to show more characteristics of a conventional fairy tale in 18th century France. La Bonne Petite Source uh, bedtime story tells a strange tale of a fairy tale that changes into a mouse to have a good queen defeat an evil queen, evil king. The mouse secretly hides under the evil king's pillow and defeats him by knocking out his tooth. Fairy tale. Uh, Scandinavian lore. So why does the tooth fairy leave money under the pillow? The idea of exchanging a tooth for coins originated in Scandinavia. Vikings paid children for a lost tooth. Teeth were worn on necklace as good luck charms in battle. While the idea of exchanging a tooth for coins quickly spread throughout the uh, rest of Europe, our fierce horn helmeted king is far cry from the image of a fairy tale collecting tooth. So a little bit about that. Last, so where does the Easter bunny come from? The Bible has no mention of mythical of a mythical hare who delivers eggs to children on a day of Christ's resurrection. So how exactly did the Easter bunny become a prominent symbol of one's Christianity most important holidays? One theory, according to time, is that the symbol of a rabbit stems from the ancient pagan tradition believed to have started the celebration of Easter. The festival of 
Eostre, which honored the goddess of fertility and spring. Supposedly, the goddess's animal symbol was a rabbit, which have long traditionally symbolized fertility due to their high uh, reproduction rate. So I gave you these uh, stories about Santa Claus, about the two fairy, and about the Easter bunny. But I mentioned Jesus first, but I gave the description of the other ones first. And now, let's get into it. Do you believe a fairy tale? Or do, do we believe a fairy tale about Santa Claus? About the food, food tooth t uh, fairy or the Easter bunny? We have made that more popular. We can, uh, in, in uh, schools and in institutions and in governments, they don't mind talking about these other characters. But if you want to talk about Jesus Christ, then they want to say, oh, separation of church and state will separate these other characters, but not Jesus Christ. You know, I've been afforded and Rock Faith been afforded the opportunity. Uh, I, I live in uh, North Chesterfield near Chester and one of the schools of Beulah Elementary, I thank God for them. I've been invited and been doing it for about three weeks, four weeks, where before school starts, uh, they invited me to come into a study, a Bible study. These are the faculty and staff, not outsiders. Then after that, we'll go around a the flagpole. Then they have me to pray. I thank God for that opportunity because we can go into schools and pray and set the tone for that day. And I thank God for that, that we have the opportunity and we don't talk about the Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, or the Easter Bunny. We're talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So now, I gave you all the information. Whose report you gonna believe? Who are you gonna trust? Who are you gonna stand for? These other characters or Jesus Christ? So even though uh, Christmas is around the corner, I remember as a child back in North Carolina, when I found out the story about Santa Claus, I was angry at my parents. I'm kind of thinking, why do you lie to me? I didn't voice that, but why did you lie to me? Then you, a, a child can begin to think, what other lies are the parents telling us? So tell the truth to your children. Some people say, well, you destroy, destroy their imagination. Let the, the uh, fairy tales be the fairy tales. But tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them that during this season, we're celebrating his birthday and God bless us. And that's what we told our children. I said, God bless us to work hard. And these are some gifts that God bless us to give to you. We never told that lie about the other man. Can't do it. Because if you lie about that, what else are you going to lie about? In Matthew the eighth, uh, Matthew the first chapter, the birth of Jesus foretold. Now we got to decide today, whose report are we gonna believe? Are we gonna believe Jesus Christ, the story about Jesus Christ, about Santa Claus, about the Tooth Fairy, or the Easter Bunny, or other fables or fairy tales? Who are we gonna believe? Who can actually save us? Who can actually deliver us? Can the Tooth Fairy do that? Okay, Matthew, the first chapter. Let's turn there. And I thank God for you all today. Thank you all for being with us all this year on our virtual service. Like I said, this, this will be my last Sunday service of this year because Minister Sherry is going to bring in uh, next week's uh, message. And I thank God for that. Matthew, the first chapter, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a uh, child of the Holy Ghost. We all been reading that. Then Joseph, her husband, uh, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take on thee Mary thy wife, 
for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, we've been reading this for eons, but it's got to get in our spirit. And he shall bring forth, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Think about that. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of uh, the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they should call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had uh, bidding him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name and she uh, and he called his name Jesus. Now, the birth of Jesus foretold versus the story of the other characters. This is foretold in the Old Testament. It's foretold about the birth of Jesus. Now, if we turn to Luke, the second chapter, and you'll see at the end what I'm really talking about. I hope you can get it now. Because we've got to tell the truth. Like I told you, I mentioned from the beginning, the story, the show about to tell the truth, where contestants of the four people, one is living a, uh, a, a life of notoriety or good occupation or whatever, and, they, and they're trying to trick the audience to see which one of them can tell who's the real contestant. We know, if I may use this, the real contestant is this story, and in this life is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can save us. We need to yell this to the rooftop, especially yell it all the time. But this season where people are running around panic, people are running around like, I got to cook this, I got to cook that. And I'm not anti-celebration. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, there is a time and a place basically for everything. Time to mourn, time to die, time to heal, so forth and so on. So we should celebrate milestone events personally and what's on the calendar. But the celebration, the most important one is to celebrate the birth, the life, the death of Jesus Christ and his return. We should do that, not just Christmas time. Luke 2 one through seven, there aren't any coincidences concerning the things of God. And I had mentioned that on our word study on Wednesday night. There are no coincidences or happenstance with Christ. God knows what's going to happen. He, he put things forth that's going to happen. Not the evil, not the evil, not the evil. Okay. But God knows things don't catch him off God. Pandemic. The COVID-19, the Omicron, the Delta, and all these others, cancer, pneumonia, none of these things caught God off guard because they fall of man. This is what caused all of this. So let's go to this. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, meaning, or enrolled. And this taxing, taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a, of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that he should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in a swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. See, it was God's will for them to be taxed. Now, Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, had put this in place, I don't know how long ago, but a long time before this, to at this time, long time. See, many things, even with evil people put in place, there's no coincidences. God can use that to still bring forth what he desired. So him being in the lineage of David, then he was, uh, they had to go to be enrolled or taxed. And he was um, 
born in Bethlehem. Hmm. Let me tell you this. I know our postcards, our TVs, our advertisement showing that that stable was all beautiful, all nice, the animals standing around. More than likely, no. It wasn't that way, more than likely. I was born on a farm. I know what a stable is. The selly, the smelly mules, the horse, well, mostly had mules. Uh, the chickens and the pigs and all the other animals. Even at night, it was, we didn't have much light, especially 50 plus years ago, 60 years ago. And it didn't smell good and the light wasn't that bright unless the moonlight was in full. But on these cars, see, they got to make it look so dainty, so bright and beautiful. It was not a beautiful sight in that sense of how, how where Christ was in the stable with these animals. So we can't uh, live in a fairy tale or, or what Hollywood presented. He was born in a lowly state. No, no glitz and glamour at that time. The sun, the stars probably shining bright and so forth and so on. And I know they said that the uh, wives, men and all of that were, uh, you see it, that they were there at the birth of Christ. And more than likely is there are a couple of schools of thoughts. He wasn't even, they weren't even there at that time. It was sometime later, but we're not going to get in debate about this. One thing we do know. Jesus Christ was born. That's the greatest part. We don't know the exact date. Some say he was born in the warm month, in the spring, almost the summer, around June. We know commercialism has it be cold and snow and, and you know, sell a lot of things, products. But again, we're not going to get into that debate. I don't, forgive me, I don't care when he was born, the date, because I don't know. But the fact is, he was born to save me of my sins, to save the world of, of their sins. Then we turn to Matthew, the 16th chapter. I'm trying to get us to understand which of these characters are we going to believe and to tell the truth. Which of these characters can save us of our sins, who can hear our prayers, that who can hear and see approximately 7 billion people in the world today at one time. Which character can hear, see, and answer prayers to the believers, but again, about 7 billion people in the world? Santa Claus, Chris Kringle, all of that, St. Nick, they cannot do that. None of them, only one of these characters, and only one person in the world that was Jesus Christ. So Matthew 16, 13 through 19, the Holy Spirit revealed who Jesus was. Now, let's get to it. The Holy Spirit revealed who Jesus was. 16, 13 through 19, Matthew, uh, and Simon Peter answered, let me go back when Jesus came. Go to 13. Yeah, I, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Who do, who, who do you say? And they said, some that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Okay. He said to them, but whom say ye that I am? Who do we say Jesus is? I'm talking about us now, me. Who do we say who Jesus is right now? Is he our Lord and Savior? Is he our all in all? Is he the great I am? Is he the little valley? Bright and morning star? Is he my lawyer in the courtroom, my gro courtroom, my grocery when I need food? Who do we say he is? And number one, the savior of my soul. Who do we say he is? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Hmm. Or did he say, and Simon answered and said, Thou art Santa Claus. 
Thou art the tooth fairy. Thou art the Easter bunny. Even if they were real, they died and won't come back. Even if they by chance, let's say they were real. Uh-uh, nope. But Simon Peter Anson said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That's, that's who, to tell the truth, to tell the truth, that's who Christ is. To tell the truth. He's a son of the living God. And my point was many hearts are broken during the Christmas season because they're believing in the man, the fairy tale. Many hearts are broken during this Christmas season because they are believing in the man or the thing or, the, or they believe in the fairy tale. Jesus Christ, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is no fairy tale. He's the real thing. And I don't get in debate about people and what they believe. You can believe in a rock over there. You can believe in a, a tree. You can believe in another person. You can believe all of that. I know in whom I believe. So we're not going to fight. We're not going to fuss. But you're not going to shut me down in what I believe in. I don't try to shut you down. You, we have, as I said, we are citizens of this land, of this world of various countries, we have our rights, our inalienable rights, right to worship like we want to worship, right to travel, right to own private property. We have rights. But I'm going to tell you, I believe in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's whom I believe in. Who I believe in. John 14, 1 through 6. My question is, who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? Are we using opportunities, especially during this season, to tell people about Jesus Christ? Um, I, I kind of messed up because in Matthew 16, 13 to 9 through 9, 19, the a point was the Holy Spirit revealed who Jesus was. Now, John 14, 1 through 6, uh, it's a many hearts are broken during the season because they're believing me in the fairy tale. So John 14, 1 through 6. Okay. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, but you also in me. Jesus saying, let not your heart be troubled. During this season, don't let it be troubled. We have... Um, Many have lost loved ones throughout this year and of late. Um, as I said on last Sunday, I believe I did, or in the word study, how I lost a sister-in-law back home in North Carolina. Then two, about two weeks ago, we lost our second older sibling, our brother. So my brother who lost his wife, now in turn, thank God he's a man of God has in turn, four months later, lost his brother. So others have lost loved one, especially this time of year, and it makes it even harder. But the Bible is letting us know, the word is letting us know, even during this season, and my brother has a uh, large family. He's four years older than myself. And I mentioned to him the other night, and uh, <laughs> my name is Gooley, and his name is Gomazi. And I look like him, him being the oldest, so I look like him. But anyway, he had, I think, seven daughters and one son. So they always have a big gathering throughout the year, family. This year, he's without his wife, even though the children are grown and gone, but they were out uh, not being with their mother. So I still pray for him and others during this season because it's difficult. But the word of God, let me know, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
Know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, here is, here is the point. Here is the point right here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Santa Claus is not the way, the truth, and life, nor the two furry, nor the Easter bunny, nor any other entity. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we can't come to God no other way but, by through, but through Jesus Christ to tell the truth. To tell the truth, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Acts 4, 1 through 13, there is no other name that which we can be saved by Jesus. There is no other name, no other name. I'm really trying to drive this in today because we, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Acts 4, who do you believe? Who do you worship? We can say it with our mouths, but what is our lifestyle saying? And I won't read all 13 of the verses right now. And as they spoke unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came unto them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus Christ the resurrection of the dead. We got to keep preaching, people. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now evening time. They couldn't do anything because it was late. How be it many of them which heard the word believe, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Are we telling the word? Are we preaching? Are we living? Are we preaching? Then are we living? That sandwich, the word of God. And it came to pass in the morrow that there are rulers and elders scri and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and many as well of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, you rulers of the people and the elders of Israel. So in other words, we are doing this by the power of Jesus Christ. There is no other name that we do what we do. And for us today, there is no other name. There is no other source, no other entity that we need to bow down to, to worship, but to Jesus Christ. There is no other name that we can be saved by, only by and through the blood of Jesus Christ. In Matthew the 27th, Jesus did not respond to Pilate's question. And I, and I love this, it's, it's awesome. It's really awesome, uh, Matthew the 27th. That's when Jesus was brought up, being accused. And, if, and the funny thing about it, the Pharisees and all those guys, they didn't want to do any harm because it was becoming sundown and, and the Sabbath. So in other words, we can't have, we can't have our hands in the end of this. We can't do anything because tomorrow will be the Sabbath. So we can't do anything. Wow. Jesus did not respond to Pilate's questions one and two. And when the morning was coming, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to, to death. It was his own people now. A lot of time it's our own familiar people that cause us harm. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Let, let me skip a little bit. Uh, if you go to 13, the whole uh, set of strips are 27, one through two and 13 through 26. And uh, let's go there. I'll go to 13. Then said Pilate to him, hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never, uh, never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Sometimes we don't need to, need to answer people. People want to debate. People want to just, just do whatever we want to do. Sometimes we don't need to say a word. There is a time that we don't speak. Then go down to 17. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that not, he knew that for envy they delivered him. 
In other words, this whole story, they brought Jesus up. And Pilate said, I have no, find no fault in this man. Pilate didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to do anything. But the people said, uh-uh. He said, now, we got a, it's tradition or where it was each year, they set a criminal free. And he said, hmm, hey, I don't find no fault. So who would you have me to set free? They said Barabbas, a criminal or thief. They rather for an innocent man. Now, this was already all day, but they rather for an innocent man to be put to death and let a criminal go free. We rather believe the fairy tales, many of us, we rather believe the fairy tales. We rather, rather believe the lies than to believe Jesus Christ or the story or the accurate history of Jesus Christ. And our schools and government and society as a whole, they, we can promote these other characters. But if you say something about Jesus Christ, then people want to go ballistic. Separation of state and church, like I said, or don't bring that in here. If you can bring your job on the job site, have all the pornographic uh, uh, pictures and cursing and, and lying, telling nasty jokes, then I have a right and we have a right as believers to talk about Jesus Christ. Now, if someone said, I don't want to hear that, don't force it on them. If you're in a group at work or wherever you are and you sit down to your lunchtime or whatever and you are um, talking about Christ and the authorities, the leadership say, well, you all shouldn't do that, but we need to tell them, then they can't talk about what they're talking about. We have our rights. We can't stand down. We can't take down uh, concerning the word of God. So at that time, Jesus didn't respond. Like I said, sometimes we don't need to say a word. Just close our mouths and let God do what he has to do. But like I said, there's a time and a place for everything. Now, Philippians 2. I thank God for his word. Uh, 1 through 11. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being on one, of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own thing, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, he thought it not right, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no rep reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Jesus took on the form of a servant, so we need to do the same thing, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. And I'm going to skip down to 11. Like I said, please go back over this. We have it on uh, this message is on live now. We have it on YouTube, uh, on our website, so you can see all these messages. And then I stop with 10. Then at the name of Jesus, Irving knee shall bow, should bow, are things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Every Jew, every Muslim, every atheist, every whatever, going to have to bow down to God. I don't care what you believe in or don't believe in. We're going to have to bow down. So I don't care what your belief is. We're going to have to bow down. And every knee will bow down to him and confess that he is Lord. Every knee going to have to do that. So let us continue to praise God. Let us continue to worship him. Bow down before him. 
Let us not take down. Let us uphold the name of Jesus Christ. Let us uphold the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, let's turn to Luke. The 16th chapter. And it's 19 through 31 point. So many of us proclaim that God doesn't exist, but don't be like the rich man who lost out. Also, we don't have to debate or argue. The total story will be revealed. Again, this isn't a fairy tale. 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, who was laid at the, his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and he was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, and send Lazarus that he may dip the, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou, that thou in thy lifetime receivest good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Besides all this, between us and you is a great gulf mixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one sent went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they heard not Moses and the prophets, and neither would they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Well, look at this. One send one that rose from the dead. Well, Jesus Christ, he rose from the dead. So he is here today through the word, printed word that we see, but he is the word. So he rose from the dead and we still don't believe as a whole. He rose from the dead and we still don't want to take what the word of God said. So I'm saying now to tell the truth, the truth serum test. And like I said, the truth serum test was an injection to try to get the person to tell the truth, which now I think for the most part is illegal. But guess what? They've uh, banded that or outlawed that. You know what the truth serum test, serum test is? The word of God to tell the truth. We get the word of God in us and it will cause us to tell the truth. It will cause us to be that light. So whose report are you going to believe? Again, we talked about to tell the truth. We talked about the fairy tales. Jesus Christ, Santa Claus, the two fairy or the Easter bunny and many other fables. Of all those four, who's the one that can save us? Who's the one that was sent down from the father from on high to save us? Who's the one that's going to come back? and take us away. Who is the one? Santa Claus can't do that. Two fairy and many of these things can't do that. So we talked about how Jesus came, how he was born, how they set him up, sent him up to Pilate so he couldn't have him executed. Pilate said, I found no fault in this man. Then he said, you know, traditionally we release one criminal and who do you want me to release? And they said, Barabbas, 
the crook, the criminal. Then we know that every knee is going to bow. Every knee should bow at the name of Jesus. There come a time we're going to have to bow. Whether you're a Jew, Gentile, whether you um, are Muslim, whether you whatever, all of us going to have to bow down at the name of Jesus. And the fact is, we're all going to have to make that decision. So at this time, I thank God for the word. Will you make a decision for Christ? What will be the so awesome with Christ? What will be so pleasing in God's eyesight that we give our lives to Jesus during this holiday season? which we supposedly be celebrating his birth. What will be so great that we re-evaluate ourselves that as a backslider, we come back to Jesus? As saints, believers in Jesus Christ, that we grab a hold more of his word. What a celebration we will have. What Glory would that give to God? Think about it. Suppose you had a birthday. What well, we do. You have a birthday. Suppose you set a celebration together. Or someone set a celebration for you. And invite all their friends and co-workers and whatever. And no one showed up to celebrate. How will you feel? No one showed up to celebrate. How would you feel? How do you think God, how do you think Jesus Christ feel when the, the, bird, the Christmas, of, as man had put it together, supposedly to represent the birth of Jesus Christ, who shows up? Who really shows up from the heart? Who shows up to celebrate him all year round? Who shows up? How do you feel? How do you think he feels? when we don't show up in our everyday lives. So at this time, I'll pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us. Thank you for blessing us to come today. We're coming through this uh, season to celebrate your birth, which we as believers celebrate all year round. Save on today, deliver on the day and set free. Let hearts be shaken, dear God. Oh God, to be renewed in him in you, to be renewed, Father, to tell the truth, to be renewed, Father, that we will go by the truth serving test, which is the word of God. We can't see you, but we have your word printed. We have you printed on these pages. So we thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for now. We thank God for you. Be safe during this holiday season. Be watchful. Be careful in all your celebration and all the activities going in and out. Before we do any of that, let's give God the praise. On, on uh, Christmas morning, get up praising God. If you got to call each other, if you got to get on virtual technology and, and, and come together where people are going to churches and to celebrate, don't just sit home and and, and without even in your home, giving God a praise because it's him who will celebrate. So we'll see the next time, same place, same time. But remember this, enjoy every moment of every day to the fullest intentionally. See you in the new year. Thank you.